Hey everybody, it's Paul. Welcome to Paul's Blind Soup for the Soul. I'm just here on this uh, Monday evening, probably one of the last thunderstorms of the year around here in northern Illinois. I think most of it has passed already, but I'm just sitting out here on my front porch just, you know, listening to the rain and wind and the rushing of the water in that street sewer out in my cul-de-sac that's flowing through out between my neighbors and my property. It's, li it's like there's five houses in this cul-de-sac and there's two storm sewers and uh, they all drain to one sewer and it goes between my property and my neighbor's property out to a big swale. We're like in a rural subdivision near Rockford, Illinois. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, I'm just out here relaxing and I thought I would uh, do a video on um, what my vision was like before I lost it. When I started this channel or changed the name uh, when I lost my vision um, there was a gentleman that commented and was very inquisitive um, about many things and one of the things he suggested was uh, you should make a video about what it was like before you went legally blind and at first I thought well I don't think anybody would really care but um, I thought they would just want to know what it's like to be legally blind, but after further thought, that is a pretty good idea. So here we go. I'm enjoying this, the sound of rain, it's about 64 degrees, um, very peaceful. So. Um, before I lost my vision, and the previous videos I put out there about how my vision was, but on a very fast-paced, short story, getting to the point of when I went legally blind. So, this is just a video on um, how it was before that. So as you know, um, I ended up being diagnosed with glaucoma at nine months of age. Uh, growing up, like everybody else, you just don't know uh, that you are visually impaired. Um, the left eye was basically legally blind back in the 60s when I was born in the 60s um, the right eye um, had some damage but I could function very well but I didn't know that as a kid I thought you know this is all normal so growing up you know I, you know, was a typical kid, ride the bike all over the place and drive, you know, ride the bike like crazy. Speed Racer was one of my heroes at the time. And I would just ride my bike and <laughs> just stare at the front wheel of my bicycle and just in my head, go Speed Racer, go. And not even pay attention where the hell I'm going. I was a nut. Um, there was one incident that I ended up ramming into a car at an intersection on a, uh, 
small street, you know, it was 25 miles an hour, you know, residential area. And uh, next thing you know, I see a rear tire and I hit the rear quarter panel and fly off my bike and I'm on the trunk of this massive, uh, I think it was a Buick LeSabre if I can, you know, recollect, but, you know, it had a huge trunk. I mean, this car was big and, you know, rolled off the trunk and fell onto the street and rolled over a few times and ended up, uh, <laughs> this is the crazy thing. I just had like a scraped knuckle, but you hear, you know, skidding of brakes and there was an older woman driving and she was terrified. And, you know, being a kid, I was, I was scared that my dad was going to kick my ass because the bike was a pretzel. I mean, it was a miracle I'm alive, but the bike was a pretzel and I got to go home and, you know, show my dad this bike. So this kind woman take me home and, um... Long story short, uh, Dad had a fit, but well, I didn't get beat, thank God. And, you know, I moved on. So that was kind of like one of my first realizations that I can't be a normal person doing these things because I could, you know, possibly kill myself. So um, I believe that. I think I was eight or nine at that time. But anyways, um, as I grew older and went into high school, I started learning things of, um, you know, I wanted to be able to drive. And uh, in Illinois, it's legal to drive. You can have a license and drive if you're blind in one eye. And see in the other and the other eye uh, there are some restrictions so I just barely made those restrictions I believe the nasal measurement uh, that's from the center of your eye to your nose um, had to be 35 degrees and then your temporal going from the center of your eye to your temple of your head had to be, I believe, 80. So they came out like to 115. Um, it might have been 70 because I think the total visual field had to be 105 for Illinois, which I just barely made it with like 110, 115. So, um, but that doesn't mean that you just can be a you know, normal teenager and just do whatever you want. Um, inclement weather was difficult. Every time it would rain, that was my snow followed by a close second, but rain was bad. Uh, when the roads were like glass, you couldn't see the lines very well. So I would pick and choose my battles when I go behind the wheel. And sometimes you just push through it because you just got to get whatever needs to get done. So, growing up um, working uh, after high school, uh, I worked at this uh, factory. Uh, it was a warehouse. It was a chain warehouse. And um, they wanted me to drive a forklift. And... Um, I came to find out that I cannot drive a forklift because you need depth perception for that. So when you're blind in one eye and see out of the other, it's very difficult for depth perception. So when I was trying to go like on a third shelf of a of, in a warehouse with the forks way above my head and try to you know fit the forks perfectly within the skid and lift it, I couldn't do it. So I knew my limitations real quick. Stairs. Some people struggle with stairs. I did not. Um, 
they just came natural to me. I mean, a lot of people, once you're going up and down stairs, you don't look at your feet and at the stairs. You just kind of feel it, you know. So that's how I survived with that. Um, but I quickly learned um, for this individual that made a comment about... Uh, did you have limitations and stuff? So I, I have a feeling that maybe he has a limitation and he wants empathy. So I'm trying to give that to him and for anybody else. Um, you take it as you go. Um, you try it and if it doesn't work, you just don't do it. And then you find other avenues. So. Um, I ended up as a printer all my life working, you know, presses. Uh, I could never work a punch press uh, because you need depth perception for that. But if you use common sense and learned about the machine and don't put your hands where they don't belong, um, you, you you know you do you do fine. So I'm 53 years old and. I've known people that have lost hands and arms, uh, hurt themselves badly through uh, the printing industry with all these machines. Um, I have ten fingers and ten toes, probably I can say, um, just simply because you have to know your limitations and you do what you can and that's it don't be the hero um, I've had cuts and scrapes and you know the normal things safety was always a big deal for me I've been on safety committees and stuff like that and had a lot of fun being on committees and um, people enjoyed it because of the fact that you know I looked at things in a different angle and you know it was not just convenience just to be safe it was my life I had to be safe so and still produce so um, you find your niche you have to find your niche what you're passionate about. I know that money has to play into it too. You want to go into an industry that maybe you may pay more. Um, you just do what you can even though they say you can't do it. And then you do it. And if you can't do it, then you just stop and move on to something else. But in my case, 90% of the things that people said I couldn't do, I could do. Um, but that was, you know, during the time that I had some good vision out of the right eye uh, to function. And then um, I had routine surgery and I'm done. I can't. It's it's over. I have less than five degrees vision, and I'm legally blind. I've worked all my life, and um, this is why I'm here. I'm just here to, you know, do something positive in my life to share my life with people. Um, I certainly hope that. Uh, this individual that wanted to know about did I you know what were my struggles um, did you have struggles and problems in your life as you are growing up and trying to find work and this and that and the other I always had to prove myself and when you had a physical I would talk to the doctor and the doctors like you know very cautious and I said look I can do this this then this and I cannot do this and this and this and you're straight up with them and nine times out of ten they you know approve you and you know you have a job um, and then 
you have to prove yourself. You have to produce. Employers back then, especially today, um, they're not going to cater you or babysit you. I mean, to a point, if there's something reasonable because you're struggling with your vision, they can help you. But if you can't produce, then, you know, you're done. And you have to find a different thing to do. Um, I was lucky in that part that I was successful in those areas. Uh, enough to get married, raise two kids, and uh, have a life. And, you know, I worked hard. Uh, unfortunately, towards the end when my boys were older, they, my wife and I ended up in a divorce, and they, everyone moved on. So it's just me and my girl, my new girl I've met. I've been with her now for almost nine years, so. Um, I just wanted to share the struggles that I had early on. Um, as a child, you learn to, you don't know until it happens, and then you go from there. But yes, there are struggles, and you just have to find your limitations, and you have to be tenacious and perseverant in your life. Even though I'm now legally blind in the past, I still had a disability, so vi basically I was still visually impaired, even though I didn't think of it in my head at the time. And always had to prove myself and push forward. And uh, I believe uh, the people in the VIP community, just to get through life, the strength and perseverance to get through it, and then you're successful. Imagine if you were just like everybody else that had perfect 2020 vision. And you have that strength within you. And then you have this 2020 vision. You could rule the world. I mean, it's incredible. So I think the strongest people in this world are people with disabilities. Because we are faced with challenges and we have to persevere through them. And it makes us stronger. And... I'm not taking away the people that can, you know, see perfectly and have no disabilities, but they just don't know. They don't have that empathy. Um, those challenges. So I just will leave you with uh, this and a little bonus. Uh, I wanted to play a little bit of flute music while it's just still raining. Enjoy everybody.
This is Paul from Blind Soup for the Soul. Take care, everybody. Paul is out.